everybody. Welcome to the Down the Road Travel Channel. My name is Will Van Winkle. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm not doing a destination video. I'm doing a troubleshooting video. Our fridge in our RV, the Norcold N811 RT, is only working on propane. So it requires a little bit of troubleshooting to figure out where the problem is. Uh, I checked the power receptacle using a voltmeter. I checked the cable coming out of the cable. We were getting a blinking code on the light. So right here, when I had this turned on, the on light would be solid, blink three times, and then be solid again. The gas mode would turn on. So that, the blinking, based on the code, was an indicator that the AC heating element was going out. Now the way these fridges work, uh, they're, the heating elements will heat ammonia and somehow the ammonia, when it cools down, will cool the fridge. I don't know the exact science behind it. Uh, I just know that ours didn't work. Uh, so that code indicated that the AC heating, heating element was out and needed to be replaced. However, it was no longer cooling on propane either. So, you know, I went in and I looked at things and I tried to pull out the AC heating element and it would not budge. I sprayed it with... WD-40, I've sprayed it with P blaster I've sprayed it with everything, I've tapped it, I've, I've turned it. Ammonia was all the way up to here on this when I uh, opened up the chimney to see what was going on. And you can see all of that is the ammonia. So that's a good indicator that the entire cooling element is bad and needs to be replaced. I've done the pricing on it. That was about $1,200. For a new one, probably about $800 for a used one. So we decided to go a different route. Enter the Magic Chef 10.1 cubic inch uh, or cubic foot uh, refrigerator and freezer combination. We did a lot of, I did a lot of research on this and uh, this one almost will drop into the spot where the Norcold 811 is. Um, it's much bigger on the inside as you can tell. Uh, weighs about half the weight. I got this in the RV by myself, no help. Um, had about an inch to spare on either side of the door. And now it's just kind of off to the side. We're going to sit it there. What I would recommend is put a towel down. Uh, that way you don't scratch up your floor. And uh, we'll get to work pulling the 811 out here in just a minute. So obviously first thing I'm going to do is remove or turn the gas off. And then remove the gas line. We're going to get this stuff out of the way. 19 millimeter in the base star. And we're going to get this off here and plug that up. I got the plug coming later in the day. And this of course doesn't want to move so might need to brace it somehow. Or go get the WD-40. Alright, sprayed it with the WD-40. Going to brace it with a 2x4. doesn't want to budge. Alright, well after a few choice words we were able to get the gas line off. I do have a 3 8 inch flare plug coming later today that we'll use to cap that off. That way we don't have to cut the line and worry about that and we can leave it there in case we wanted to uh, put an LP fridge in again at some future date. So it looks like there are two screws. One here one here, we'll pull those both out. You'd think with as heavy as this is, it was something more holding it on, but it looks like it's really only those two screws and the screws up in the front inside. So let's go look at those and get those out. Alright, so we're inside. There's a screw here underneath the uh, thing. There's two screws there. I don't know what those things are called. They just make things pretty. We're going to pull these two screws out as well. I am going to take the doors off this. So we can pull the frame off, we're going to go ahead and pull the doors out. Now that's going to be a tight fit, so I've got to find a smaller head or a larger bit. Well, it's 11 millimeter um, socket. And we are just trying to get some light in here right now so I can see what I got. 
This isn't the best toolkit, but I've had it for a long time. Uh, da -da -da -da. There we go. Let's pull these doors off. Probably should have done the bottom first. I'll leave that in there for a little bit so I can get this bottom one off. I think it just lifts. Okay, so the bottom just lifts. Alright. And lift it off. I'm going to go ahead and get these out of here, come back and pull those other two screws, and then we should be able to start moving it out. Alright, so here at the bottom there's one, pull that, and there's one more right there. So I did discover you have to pull these hinge parts off the top and the very bottom one to get those frame pieces out. And when you pull that frame piece out, you will find there's another set of screws right there. So we got to get those out too. Once you got the two screws out at the bottom, two screws out at the top, you start pulling a little bit, try to loosen it up, and then head on back outside. And that's where the fun part comes in. Find a place where you can put your hand and start pushing it. And it's little by little and the whole cooling unit on this thing needs to be replaced which is why i'm going to go ahead and replace the whole thing um so i'm not worried about breaking the chimney or the parts and i got enough to get a little bit of a handhold here so i'm going to try to tug a little bit and just kind of inch it out you can get to the point now where i'm worried about dropping it on my foot notice i do have my towel here that way if it does drop, I'm not going to gouge the floor. And there we go. We're almost out. So, once I pull this out, you will be surprised at how much dirt and maybe mud dauber nests and things like that. And this is the part that worries me because I am doing this alone. Um, this is, I think, about 140 pounds. So, I'm a little worried about dropping it. So, I'm going to stop recording here for a minute and get it off here. So if yours is anything like my Base Star 3310, your furnace is underneath your fridge. So I went ahead and removed those panels so I didn't knock them off. I do have a, a little panel here that I need to glue back together. That's no problem. Shouldn't take long at all. I've got some clamps. Everything will be fine. But I'm gonna put the um, I'm gonna put the Magic Chef in there first. You see, I did make a bit of a mess pulling that out. So what I'm gonna do is on the access panel, I have some broken screens. So when I get to the access panel, I'm going to use some of that screen material over this to kind of give me a little bit more of um, protection against bugs. Uh, just because I don't want them getting in there, getting into things. And those are hot wires. I believe they're 12 volt. Uh, I could go get my um, voltmeter and check it. But... I'm pretty sure that's 12 volt. I'm going to tape them off and I'm going to just kind of keep them out of the way. Again, that way if we ever want to install another RV specific fridge, we've got all the connections that we need. Alright, there we go. There's some insulation back here. Some wasp nests, mud dauber nests. Uh, a lot of spider webs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come get the uh, shop vac. We're going to clean this mess up. So while I was doing that, the plug came in. Um, I ordered the Everbuilt because I got everything at Home Depot. This is where you get this fridge. Um, 
and it's a 3 8 inch flare plug so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in then all we have to do is get that fridge in there which it's going to be a little difficult by myself just because of the angle. I thought I could pull it down a little bit more and then kind of get the bottom uh, of that up onto the cabinet. Um, because our slide out curves around here that made it just about three inches too short for me to do that. Even if I pull the door off, I'm going to be short. All right, so we got the old fridge out. We cleaned up out the inside here. That's actually caulking. I don't know if you can see that. That's not coming out. That were uh, mud daubers, I guess they're called. Uh, wasp nests, all kinds of fun stuff. I put a screen on there. That way, less bugs can get in. Uh, now all I have left to do, oh, capped off the gas line right here. Move these live wires out of the way, tape them over as a precaution. They are shielded, uh, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, now all that's left to do is get this up on the shelf, plug it in, secure it, and frame it so that it looks all nice and pretty. And then we are good to go. Oh, I'll fix this little piece that came off while I was doing that. And that's just a little bit of wood glue, so that should be fine. I'm not going to do that until after um, this is installed. Again, because of the lack of room here, I'm going to need a hand because it's got to come straight up. And it's just a little too much for me to lift it up straight up by myself. Uh, you know, I, I can't get... I can't do anything but get on one side, so I'm not going to be able to do that until I get somebody over here. But it's pretty well done. Everything is gone. I checked the gas. There's no leak. Um, stove works fine. So all I got to do is get this thing in there and make it look pretty. You see how tight it fits in there? It is almost a perfect fit. If you go up here, you'll see there's a little bit of room here. Right, so to secure it. Put L brackets up here at the top. I wanted them at the very top to put where the old ones were. That's not going to happen. Uh, stuffed in a bunch of insulation in there. <clears throat> Did that on both sides. Down here, straight brackets, three inch uh, for the gap. And then in the back screws. And I tried to use existing holes wherever I could. Then I got the lock from uh, Camping World. I know, Camping World. Um, fits in where the door handle um screws go so i don't have to do any drilling there just close your door pull the lock it may bounce open a little bit but it's not opening so we can drive down the road without the doors opening but and then, as of right now there's no cold air coming through there went ahead and did a little caulking on the side here um and i'll do some trim work there but it's up it's running and it really saved our butts because we had a tornado just a couple days ago and we were without power for a couple days and it was nice that I had this in here that I could drop all the food in here so far everything looks good it sticks out a little bit further than the old fridge but not so much that it's gonna get in the way um, so hopefully this will help you guys when you've got some problems to, to resolve with your refrigerator anyway thanks for watching I'll see y'all down the road let's hit the road So